You know, when I was taking my master's degree in military history, I had to read all these uh, military strategists, okay? And they're talking about all the stuff, and I'm like, yeah, great, this is all wonderful. And basically, there's, there's two kinds of war. There's offensive war and defensive war, right? Look at what he says here. Verse 11, Ephesians 6, 11. Put on, therefore, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to charge hell with a squirt gun. Is that what it said? What's it say? Stand. All we're asked to do is what? Draw a line in the sand. Draw the, draw the doctrinal line in the sand and what? Stand there. Firm, fixed, and unmoving. Stand. Hold the line. Because the wiles of the devil are going to come and they're going to try to move you off the line. Stand fast. Fixed. Hold the line. Read on. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against <clears throat> principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Look at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to what? Withstand. Second time. Have in the evil day, having done all to what? Stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore. You get the point? What's the point? Stand. Hold the line. That's all we're asked to do. The wiles, the fiery darts of the wicked are going to be shot. The doctrines of devils are placed to ensnare. All we have to do is understand the truth and then hold the line. Stand. Unmovable. In the truth. Because the tactics of the adversary are to get you into the Ephesians 4.17 mindset and have you blown around with every what? Wind of doctrine. The message, the attack on the message, I've explained this in other messages and we don't have time to get into all of it, but the attack on the message of grace is threefold. Number one, Satan seeks to attack the message. Obscure it from people's understanding. If that doesn't work, he will attack you as the messenger of the message. And if that doesn't work, he'll go to phase three, where he will seek to discourage or discredit you in the minds of others. You know, this battlefield is in the mind. And we're not going to go to these verses because I think most of you know them. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable what? Service. And be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. How? By the renewing of what? Your mind. Why? Because the battle today is a Cold War battle that is being fought in the realm of your mind, and it's being fought on the realm and the playing field, and the tactics, tactics are doctrinal in nature. Now, i got a few minutes left because I started late. <laughs> I want to end this message by talking to you about the coming hot war. It's a cold war now. There was an open confrontation in time past during the earthly ministry of Christ. The tactics of the adversary have switched because God is dealing with man differently than He was in time past during the dispensation of grace. But there's going to come a hot war in the future. Come with me first to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You know, one of, I mentioned to you earlier that you're hard pressed to find any examples in the Pauline epistles where angels minister to the body of Christ, save one. Do you know when it is? With the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall what? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, look at verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Verse 16. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of who? The archangel. And the dead in Christ, I'm sorry, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air, meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with who? <clears throat> when do you find angelic ministration to the body of Christ? As the body of Christ is escorted off this rock. 
There's going to be, the, the, the archangel Michael is going to be there at the rapture. He's going to usher, usher forth a shout. The trump of God is going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to what? Rise first, and then if we're still alive when the event happens, we'll meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And there's going to be an angelic escort to where we're going. Come with me to, come with me to Revelation 12. I believe that angelic escort is to the judgment seat of Christ. But again, that's another topic that I don't have time to get into right now. <coughs> Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Revelation 12, 7. And there was war, where? In heaven. Michael and his Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his what? There's going to be a hot war where the forces of good and the forces of evil are going to battle it out for control of what? The heavens. Verse eight. And prevailed not; neither was their place found any more in heaven. So Satan and his angels are going to lose. Their positions of authority that they presently occupy are going to be stripped from them. Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Okay? And he was cast out where? Into the earth, and his angels were cast out what? There's going to be a hot war in the middle of the tribulation. War is going to be declared in heaven. And when war in heaven is declared, Michael is going to clean out the second heaven of all things that offend. And they're going to lose. And they're going to be cast where? Into the earth. You know the rest of the story. Revelation chapter 19, who comes in on a white horse, dressed in fine linen, white and clean, with the armies of heaven following him to judge and make war on earth? Lord Jesus Christ. You know, those guys are going to get whooped twice. They're going to get whooped once in heaven, and they're going to get whooped the second time on earth. And then after they get whooped on earth, they're all going to be thrown in the lake of fire. That's what they got coming to. Why? Because that lake of fire was prepared for who? Matthew 25. The devil and his water. Angels. And once, here's the, here's the best part, once all those places of authority are cleared out by Michael... Who's going to receive their inheritance? We are. As we receive our eternal inheritance in the heavenly places where we are going to run the government of heaven with Christ as our head. You know, I hope you've enjoyed the study on angels. I want to leave you with three points as we conclude the study. First, we need to fight the good fight of faith. We need to, we need to hold the line against the doctrines of devils that come to ensnare us and hold our minds hostage. Second, we need to not reverse the roles and look for angelic ministration when it's the angels who need our ministry to them. And third, we need to patiently wait for the voice of the archangel, for the trump of God, and that angelic escort where our hope will be realized. You've been watching Just Grace It, a production of Grace Life Bible Church. Salvation is free. Put your faith in the shed blood of Christ as the only payment for your sins. If you are interested in joining a community of believers who rejoice in who God has made them in Jesus Christ, call or write to us or visit us online at justgraceit.com.